gender, politics, security, history, lifestyle, health, and many sectors of development are not devoid of the influence of God. How has God influenced decisions that have changed nations? On the Sally Kim Show, we will bring you conversations about the God factor in every sphere of life. Personalities from various backgrounds will be sharing their thoughts and experiences on these critical matters. My name is Sally Kim Akolaje Apalu. Join us on the Sally Kim Show on Sally TV on Facebook, YouTube and Instagram. Sally TV, conversations that matter. Pleasure to have you join us right here on Sally TV, Sally TV, conversations that matter. And of course, we also look at issues concerning the God factor. That's our main mantra, the God factor. We're looking at talking to personalities who have experiences with God, personalities who can share their life experiences and link it to the power of the manifestation of God and the Holy Spirit. My guest today is a man who has three churches under him, has a Bible school under him. Of course, he has been in ministry for 18 years, since 2004. He started the first branch as the head office of his church in 2010, years on. His ministry, which is an apostolic ministry, has seen deliverance, healing, teaching, and working of miracles. His main mantra is that his calling hinges on the word of God and prayer. He's married with two wonderful children, his wife, Mrs. Judith Aosanya. Have I given him away? Hold on. We are right back. <laughs> Welcome back. This is Sally TV. And as I told you, we are sharing the time with personalities who are concerned about the God factor. Joining me for this program that hinges on 25 years of struggle and 25 years of the glory of God. My guest today is Apostle David Awusanya, who is the General Overseer of the Unicorn International Christian Church and President of the Unicorn School of Ministry and Ordination. Apostle, thank you so much thank for you. joining us and, and for inviting you into your church premises. Thank you. Sally. It's amazing, God, isn't it? It is. God bless you. God bless you too. I'm so grateful. Amen. Yes, You're chalking 50 years. Yes. This is amazing. Your story, you tell us, is 25 years of struggle and 25 years of the glory of God. Why do you say 25 years of struggle? Yeah, the first 25 years, uh, I did not know Christ, mm. so life was miserable. I've gone through a lot, and I realized that I need Christ. Right. All that I've done has come to zero. Mm. So when I was 25 years, I decided to receive Christ. Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior, and a new beginning starting my life. Mm. That's why I said 25 years of struggle. Wow. We thank God for your life today. Um, how did you get into ministry after accepting Christ? How did you get into ministry? Yeah, after I accepted Christ, I had a lot of prophecies that the Lord has called me. Mm. But I started doing I don't want to do the work of God <laughs> as a matter of fact. I'm coming from a, I, I came from a poor background. Mm -hmm. And then uh, things are not well in the family. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking I want to do business mm -hmm. or work and get money to take care of the family. So any time that they said, we have, a, we have a call of God, I doubt it. So I started running away. So I ended in Accra. I ran a, a man of God in the village told me a call. So I was thinking that maybe he wants me to help him. So if that is the case, that should run away from him. So I ran away from him to Accra. And by the grace of God, I came to Accra, I got a job. And I started working. But because that call is dead and I refuse to be it, I started having problems. What kind of problems? Uh, there was a time they stole money on me. The company asked me to pay. And they'll be deducting from my salary every month. And if they want to deduct that salary every month, every 100 years, I cannot pay. Oh, my goodness. So I pray to God. God, if you really call me, then let this people take off that bed or clear off that debt. 
And at the end of the month, they could not deduct anything from my salary. So quickly, I have to resign. I don't want issues to pile up. So I resigned from that company. And then I pray to God again that God should help me to get a new job, which will make me, and I, when I get that job, after two years, I'll resign and enter into ministry. I'll go to Bible school. So you resigned? I resigned. And then what did you do next? And I started Bible school. Wow. After Bible after school? After two years. I worked for two years to gather some money, then resigned and started Bible school. How did you have the, the, the feeling, because now you have three churches under you, yeah. how did you have the feeling and direction that you really needed to start your own? Yeah, when I was there, the Lord spoke to me that he has, he has taken me there for an assignment and that my assignment has finished there. So I should go and start my ministry. Was it easy to start? It wasn't easy. As I, I started as a fellowship in Dansuma. How many people? Uh, I started with four. Before then, I think after one month, the Lord moved us to eight. So we were eight. Then God helped us to get a place, somebody's house. The next neighbor came and said, "We are making noise." Mm. So they have to report me to the police. So when they reported me to the police, we went, and the police were they are becoming to the church. And then there was a day they sent summons from the court that I should report at the court. But for three days, like the letter came within three days. Right. I wasn't in church when they brought it. They brought it on weekdays. On Sunday when I went to church, because I violated that rule, they have made it a bench order. So the police came and arrested me. They arrested you? No, you have to tell me that story okay. well. Yeah. What happened? Yeah, they arrested me. The, the next neighbor said, yeah, we were making noise. Mm -hmm. So they took us to court. So you were arrested? How? Just describe the scenario yeah, to me. Yeah, the mm -hmm. police were in church Sunday morning. You were in church Sunday morning? And they came. They came. You were, you were doing, running your service? The service. I started teaching and they came. Uh -huh. They said I should put everything down. Because they, I, I've been wanted by the police, at the police, national police station. So I asked them why and they said, oh, they called me to come to court and I refused. I wasn't at court. And I said, I haven't got the letter on time. They said that, that cannot justify it. When we went, people, friends were trying to help me. But what happened to the church service? Yeah, I asked them to continue. So they continued to say church. How did you get out? Yeah, when we went, they said it was a bench order. So the following day, they have to take me to court. So you stayed in the prison cell? Yeah. Overnight? Overnight. For preaching the word of God? For, yeah, for the word of God. And what happened is, even when I went to the prison, when I enter, the people, everybody asked, why, why do you come here? All of them were asking. So I told them I was preaching. So that morning, it was Sunday. That morning, they asked me to have service with them. And some gave their life to Christ, morning and evening, devotion. So I had it morning and evening, I prayed to them. Then Monday morning, after preaching to them, they took me to court. <laughs> but by God's grace, you got out. Yeah, so when we went to the court, they, they said, uh, like, we started first, mm -hmm. adjournment, come. Then somebody advised me that. And you not have church in that premises until you finish the court case. So I was advised by my lawyer to rather tell them that I'm not interested in the court case. So when I told them, then they said, if that is the case, then it means you are not going to have church here again. My goodness. And I said, yes. So I accepted it. And it meant that that church, the structure, everything is there up to now. My goodness. Yeah, so through that then somebody connect me to a place at Mataiko. When the woman heard that a pastor was preaching and then they arrested him for just preaching, the woman gave me a place. And initially, I don't pay anything. That is this place this where place, we are? Yeah, initially. And this is my 11th year. For the past eight years, I don't pay. My goodness. Yeah. Even light bill was being paid by my landlady. Wow. Because of she said she wants to do that to receive blessing. Amen. So, but last year, she said oh, things are moving, so mm, mm, she will start mm. taking. Okay, okay. We thank God. And then from there, the other branches. Yeah, the other branches. I think when we were here for five years, mm -hmm. then the Lord opened a door for us at Odoko. Odoko. I have a friend, Pastor. Uh, we were all at ICGC. Right. Yeah. So 
He also started his church at Odoko. He moved from ICGC and started. And then the Lord spoke to him that he should go back to ICGC. So upon meditating on God, the Lord said that he should hand over that church to me. So he called me. I met him together with the wife. And he said, God has spoken. There's mm. nothing they can do about it. Wow. Then upper wager. Yeah, upper wager. Upper wager to uh, when they have, this is their fifth year. Right. So when we got uh, six year, six years in ministry in this place, uh, we had ordination. Yeah, I ordained my pastors. Right. So after ordaining them, then here we were many. We came like five. Right. So we decided to plant another branch. And then somebody also gave us uncompleted house at Upper Wager. That is his all to start a fellowship. Mm. So when we started, by the grace of God, the thing has moved. When it moved, that, that uh, uncompleted cannot accommodate us any longer. Wow. Then a member gave us a house to put up a structure. We're going on a break. When we come back, we're going to ask Apostle David Aosanya what about his educational journey? <music> We're back and uh, we're spending time with Apostle David Awusanya, who is clocking 50 years. His story is 25 years of struggle, but 25 years after that, of the glory of God. Three branches under him. He was in prison for preaching the word, but by God's grace, he has come thus far. What about your educational journey? Because you talk about being not having the best of education, but yet starting a Bible school yeah. that is accommodating people like myself and others yeah. who, are, uh, who are interested in ministry. Yeah. Tell us about the educational journey. As I said, 25 years mm. of struggle. Mm. Yeah. I've been, I went to secondary school. Yes. That's the first 25 years. Mm. But I couldn't make anything. I made some great bets. They were not, they were not proper. Mm. So one day I realized that. And we were the last batch in the secondary school. So one day I realized that I can't be a farmer forever. I was living in the village. You were on the farm? Yeah, farm. So I was in the farm. Then I heard a voice, will you be a farmer forever? Then another voice said me. Okay. So I have to find a solution now to go to school. Now the system has ended, the old system. Mm. So what should I do? I don't know what to I don't have anybody even to guide me. Mm. So the Holy Spirit told me that I go back to GSS. My goodness. So I went to GSS3 by the grace of God. So GSS3, and then within one year I wrote my exams, and the Lord had me. I had even 07. Then when I had it, I had the best of schools, like Pando Secondary School. But because of no financial support, mm. I have to look for a smaller school. So I looked for a community school, a powerful sector. And I went there. That, we paid 45. CDs for the whole year. So how are you paying your own school fees? Yeah, uh, usually I, uh, because of the farming experience, I farm. Mm -hmm. Holidays, I'll go and farm and get that money. So at times, a whole month, you won't be in school. You have to farm and get and money. Gather money. Get that money, go and pay gradually. My goodness. Then by the grace of God. But then, because of, now I have started with the Lord. So things have changed. Right. The Lord has given me wisdom. So even though I will not be in school for maybe one month, but when I come, I'll pass exams. I, I was doing well. Grace. Then, yeah. Grace. Doing well. How did you start the Bible school? Yeah, the Bible school, I went to uh, Living West School of Ministry hmm. and the ICGC. I had my diploma. Then I also went to Akona School of Ministry okay. for counseling, counseling school. Uh, so in the school, I realized that, like, I didn't start with Christ, as I said from the beginning. Mm -hmm. But everything that we teach, I have the best knowledge. I, the understanding is very quick. So exams I'll pass, I'll be passing. Then sometimes I'll even have friends who are more educated than, than me in the Bible, things of Bible. Mm. I'll do the assignment for them. Mm. Do the assignment for them. Then I realize that no, God has called me to teaching ministry. So when I completed and I started this ministry. I decided mm -hmm. that I'll start. And, it's, and this school has been operating for a year, a year now. Yeah. And how many students have passed out? Yeah, nine students. Nine like students have passed out. And are they? how are they doing? Oh, they are doing well. Oh, yeah. we thank God. All of them. They are making impact. 
when they're making yeah, impact. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. For anyone who is watching you yeah. and is limited, feels that they are limited by education, feels that they are limited by finances, they don't have maybe a spiritual father to help them, but they are called to ministry, yeah. what would you tell them? Yeah, for education, I would encourage them mm. that uh, it's good that they should move, to, they should go back to school. And the Lord, Bible said in First uh, Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 25, uh, 24, it said, he who call you is faithful, who also do it. So if it is the Lord that has called them, at least they should find a way of entering to school because the Lord also give them some platforms mm. when they are well educated. Exactly. Yeah. So finding my way in school, mm. that is the, 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 the new 25. I started in diploma, but as of now I'm having a master's in theology. Mm, bless God. Yeah. So I will encourage anybody who wants to enter into ministry, at least to educate himself or herself mm. because you might not know what God is taking you to maybe one day you, be, you become a lecturer like me but if you don't have the wisdom you are not educated there's no way you can handle that situation mm. and, and God will surely help you uh, I have this scripture in my mind that's what encourages me a lot when I became born again Isaiah 49 verse 15 it said can a woman forget the second child and have no compassion on the son of the woman Say surely she may forget, but I, the Lord, will not forget you. So, my father died 34 years ago, but I hold on to that scripture when I, I enter into Christ, and the Lord has been my provider in every situation, and has helped me to reach to this level. And the Lord gave me a way to start the Bible school. So, even my school, I don't chat much. Yeah, the reason is I've gone through that, so I decided also to help others. others. God bless you God bless. so much for that. Amazing. I'm sure there are other parts of your story that later on yeah. we will definitely share with Sally TV. But I've been in your services. I've seen the miracles, the signs and wonders and the deliverance and healing. Yeah. People are hungry for power yeah. in ministry. Yes. What do you have to tell them? Final word. Yeah, uh, what I'll tell them is you have to get closer to God. Yeah. John chapter 15, verse 5. He said, abide in me. And abide in you. A brand can do nothing unless it abides in the vine. So they have to get closer to God. Study their word, the word of God, prayer. The same verse, he says, chapter 15, 7. He said, When you abide in me and abide in anything, when you ask anything, it will be given unto you. So when they abide in the Lord, the Lord will help them and order their steps. Amen. Amen. God bless you so much. Amen. I have personally been blessed. I hope you have been blessed too. I've been speaking to Apostle David Awusanya, who is General Overseer of the Unicorn International Christian Church and President of the Unicorn uh, School of Ministry and Ordination as well. God bless you. I hope you've been blessed. See you again another time. I'm Sally Kim. Akola Shia